Hello there and thanks so much for joining me for another tutorial. I'm Erin Eno and today we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be painting these fun colorful butterflies but I'm also going to be trying out some new art supplies that were sent to me by a company called Grabby. If you do like this video please be sure to give it a thumbs up. I do an all kinds of different variety of watercolor tutorials from beginner to intermediate. So if that interests you, please be sure to subscribe. Now let's just jump in and get started and take a look at what Grabby has sent me. So as I mentioned, I was contacted by a company called Grabby to see if I would like to try out some of their art supplies. I went to their website to see what they were all about because they are a new company and I was quite impressed with what they have. They have a, a wide variety of um, products on their website. If you're into scrapbooking, um, journaling, whatever, they have stickers, pens, paints, sketchbooks, but um, they reached out to me to try out their watercolor supplies and of course I jumped at the opportunity. I'm always looking for um, new supplies to try out and especially new paper which they have also sent me and we'll get into that. They are a new company that started in January 2021 and they um, started the company in the height of the pandemic mainly because they thought people were looking people would be looking for a way to kind of calm their anxiety and I don't have to tell you so many people took up watercolor painting at that time and what I do like about this company is they also created a grabby fund and a dollar from every order goes to the grabby fund which supplies art supplies for um, people who can't afford them and I thought that was just awesome so I was really impressed with that. Okay so let's take a look at what they sent me. First of all there's a little sticker here and here they have sent me their um, 50, pan, 50 half pan set of watercolor paints. They are 100% non-toxic. They're calling them artist grade for all skill levels and this is called like the premium set. Now they don't claim that they are professional in any way so I'm not expecting professional quality. The paints I use are in between um, student and professional so it'll be interesting to see how these perform. So let's take a look at what we have. This set as I mentioned is a 50 pan set, 50 half pan set. I think I mentioned that. It comes in a nice tin and I think I will just stick that sticker on this tin. It's pretty sturdy um, and I like that it's portable. Oh and I also I want to mention the packaging. I'm all for a nice packaging and I think this is really pretty. It's got that nice kind of matte finish on it. Um, so here's the pan set and those are the 50 colors. Sorry, there's also a swatch card here. So it actually goes this way if we're matching the swatch card. So you get a little swatch card. I don't think this is, this is probably on their standard watercolor paper, probably not their cotton paper, but I will be swatching those momentarily, not on video. Um, so let's just take a look. So there's 50 half pans, as I said. They're not shiny, so we have to see you know if these are chalky or not. I don't know. This is, believe it or not, the very first pan set that I have. I usually just get the tubes and put them in my palette and let them dry. Um, so this will be interesting for me. It also comes with a brush. These are nylon bristles but they're actually kind of soft so it'd be interesting to see how they how that performs. Um, there is also a water brush. I have also never used a water brush but I have seen videos where people have used them so you have to unscrew that, fill it with water um, and it's funny because it turns the other way. I would have thought to turn it on you'd be or to put it on you'd be turning it clockwise. I guess if they're thinking you do it this way. No even that's it's backwards. So that's a little confusing. So there's the brush. It's got a very pretty nice point on it. And as I said, I've never used a water brush, so that'll be interesting for me. There's also a little sponge in here for cleaning off your brush um, and three little wells to mix in. So right off the bat, I can see where this would be a really um, handy little kit to kind of just take with you if you're going away somewhere 
you know, rather than hauling around your art supplies. I don't know if this is the brush I would use. I might put one of my other brushes in there. So let's just put this away and take a look at what else they have sent me. I'm just going to tuck that in here. I will swatch these out, um, but I'm going to do it off camera because I like to do a gradation when I swatch and that will just take way too long on camera. So also included in this 50 pan set are detail brushes. So there are six detail brushes. I will just pop one out here for you. It's actually, it's actually nice to hold. I like the shape of the handle. I can't tell honestly if this is wooden or plastic. I really don't know. Um, but let me just put this against something white so you can see the tip. This is a size one and we have, I'm going to take them out of all the packages. Okay. So here are all the detail brushes. You have uh, six brushes total and ranging from small to large, you have a triple zero, double zero, zero, one, two, and three. So that's a wide variety of detail brushes. So that is everything you get with this 50 half pan um, premium set. Now let's take a look at the pad they sent me and I'm quite excited about this because I'm always on the lookout for a good affordable 100% um, cotton paper. Um, and I also forgot to mention that if you go to their website and use my discount code Aaron Eno 15 you'll get a 15% discount on anything in their site. I also wanted to mention that they do do subscription boxes which look quite nice as well. But back to the pad. It's 100% cotton, 15 sheets. This is 8.3 by 5.8 and it's 140 pound cold press. So if you look on their website, they state that the front is cold pressed and the back is hot pressed. So you can use both sides. The, the back definitely is smoother than the front. I don't know if it's as smooth as um, other hot press papers that I've tried. I haven't tried a lot, but just from my limited experience, I it's a little rougher than the hot press that I have used, but it is good quality and I'm hoping it performs well because it's a decent price. I'm not going to rhyme prices off in this video because I think they have a sale right now and I don't want to mislead you with incorrect pricing, but I will put all the links in my description box along with my code. So that's it. So I'm going to go off camera now and I am going to rinse all my brushes out as you have to with all new brushes. I am going to swatch the color sheet off camera and we'll come back and take a look at the colors and I'll just give you my initial thoughts and then we'll get painting our butterflies. Okay, so I've done my swatching and um, what I find is they're quite vibrant. I drew a black line down the center of all my swatches to check the opacity on some of them. Um, because I, sorry, on all of them, because I knew that some of them would probably have some opacity to them, and some of them do um, more than others, not overly. They're pretty transparent, so I'm happy with that. This uh, peacock blue seems to be a little opaque. Um, maybe the Prussian blue, um, the yellow seem pretty transparent. But overall, they are quite nice. Um, they're definitely not chalky, not chalky at all. If anything, I found, and maybe it's just because I was using such uh, concentrated paint that they were maybe a little gummy. So it'll be interesting to see how they blend and move on the paper. Um, so yeah, so those are my first impressions. And now we're just going to jump in and paint our butterflies. Of course, I'm going to be using this watercolor pad. And I'm going to be using my water brush and a few of the detail brushes. I'm going to be using my size 3, 2, and 1, I believe. I don't think I'll need to go any smaller than that. And I'm going to try to do little, the little black details on all the butterflies with my paint. But if all else fails, I have a Sigma Micron uh, black in a size 1, 0. And I have 
a um, sig a uniball signo in a white. So all I did to uh, get some butterfly images was I just went on the internet and grabbed a few butterfly images and sketched them out. I'll leave a link to a PDF of these sketches, but you know, of course you can just draw any butterflies you want. And I'm going to um, lighten them a bit with my kneaded eraser. I don't need to lighten them too much because pretty much um, every butterfly is gonna have a black outline. And I want this one to be like a rainbow butterfly. So hopefully I can get a rainbow effect out of this, but I'm just gonna start by wetting these top two wings. And I'm gonna start with a light pink and this one is called just pink. So you see, it's a little different than, you know, me rhyming off standard colors. So I'm gonna start with a gradation of like a rainbow. So around the top of this wing, I'm gonna start by just plunking in some pink, like so, and I'm going to mimic that over on this wing as well. Now, I'm also probably not gonna use that sponge to rinse my brush. I'm just gonna use my water jar. I think that would be easier. So then after the pink, I'm going to go to a purple. And this one is just called dark purple in this palette. Okay, so I'm going to just tap that in so it bleeds into the pink. Like so. And I'm finding the bleeds on these actually maybe a little slow, a little slow moving, but I think it will continue to bleed out. It is fairly soft bleed, so that's nice. Just like that. And then from the purple, I'm going to go into blue and I think I will use Prussian blue. So that's a standard name. Okay, so I'm just gonna tap in some Prussian blue to kind of blend in with this purple. Like so. Then from the Prussian blue, I want to go down to like a blue green. So I'm going to use Viridian. That's kind of a bluey green. And I'm just going to do the bottom part of these wings and that'll finish off his top wings. Fix the shape of this one a little bit. It's gone a little wonky. And then from there, I'm gonna go into like a yellowy green. And actually, you know what? No. Now I'm gonna wet the two bottom wings. Let's check my sheet here. So let's go in with this permanent green here. It's quite bright. And I'm gonna do the top of his wing. And it's okay if it hits that kind of viridian color. Like so. See these greens are very vibrant. They're quite nice actually. And I don't think I came in as far as I should have. This is really bleeding in. I'm just gonna sop this up a bit. There we go. And just blend this out. 
And I'm going to go into just a yellow. And I think I will pick bright yellow. Put that here. So now we're going down to pure yellow. And I like the way that Viridian's bleeding and I might even tap in just a little bit of it. Just along the top. And that'll blend in and make it kind of greenish as well. So we've got our real kind of rainbow effect. Actually, we could even go in and maybe put in a little bit of a darker blue here. Just so it's not so crazy bright. I mean, it is bright and vivid, but we're kind of losing the transition to blue here. So I'm just going to tap in some extra blue. Rinse and draw off my brush and just kind of soften this out. So we'll let that dry and we're going to move on to our second butterfly. I want this one pink, but I don't want it crazy pink. So I'm going to use this rose powder. So it's a little bit of a softer pink than this pink up here. Okay. And again, I'm going to wet the whole butterfly. So I'm going to go into that pink and I want it to go from dark to light to the outside. So I'm just going to put this pink all along this inside edge. And this way we can have it fade out and we can get an idea of how this paint and the paper bleeds. It seems to be bleeding quite nicely. I'm going to go right to the top. Tap in a little more pigment. I want it nice and deep towards the center where his body is. Just like that. Then I'm going to switch to my size 2 brush. And what I want to do is dampen that, tap it off on my paper towel, and just kind of flick in some of this pink. Just kind of drag these little lines of pink out. So just use the smallest brush you have for this, obviously. You may not have, well, you might have a size two. That's not too uncommon. And I think I'll go back into that pink just to deepen it up a little more towards the center or towards the inside of the butterfly. like so. So, so far I'm liking the paper. I like the texture. The bleeds seem to be working nicely on it. I'm going to do the same thing. Go in with this size 2 brush and just flick out some more of these lines. If you find it's bleeding too much, you can kind of flick into it as opposed to dragging the pink out. But for this last butterfly, I want to do a gradation from green to yellow. So I'm going to use my Viridian again. Okay, and I'm not going to wet this butterfly first. 
what I'm going to do, and I know there's black detail around here, so I'm going to do all the wings at once because I'm not concerned. I will leave white space between. I'm not concerned about them bleeding into each other. And I'm going to put the red in around the outer edge. Like so. And do this one too. So I'm just going to go in with water now and just come up to that. So I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of water into my brush. And it is staining, so this color is staining a little bit, which was kind of expected, I guess. It's a pretty highly pigmented color. I'm just going to kind of get that paint moving by just kind of scrubbing at it a little bit. Go back and get some water. Bring this right down because I'm going to go in with yellow now and I kind of want these, I uh, want the yellow to blend in with the green or the viridian rather. And I'm going to use that same yellow that I used before. And I'm going to start at the bottom of the wing and come up to that green. Okay, so because it's wet, it's bleeding into that green, which is what we want. We want those nice bleeds. One last wing. I put a little bit too much water there. Hopefully I can fix that because I'm getting a real hard edge. So I'm just going to come up with this yellow, just where that green started to fade off like that. Okay. And I'm going to take my detail brush, my size two again. First of all, I'm going to put a little bit more Viridian in here. Hopefully I can get rid of that weird bloom. Just like that. And I'm going to do the same thing that we did before. I'm going to dry my brush off. Just putting a little bit more of that Viridian here. Wasn't quite as pigmented as I wanted. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. Like I said, I'm going to rinse and dry off my brush and just drag some of this viridian into where the yellow starts to bleed into it. Just gives it a little bit of texture and kind of softens that bleed a bit just so the transition into yellow isn't so harsh. Like I really like that effect there. Okay. So I think I'll leave that and I'm gonna make sure all of these butterflies are dry and then we're gonna go in and put in the black detail. So I think what I'll do is I'll start with the outside of the wing. So I'm gonna go all the way around and when I get to the top, I'm going to make it wider up here. And I'm going to leave some dots. So I don't want to fill it all in. So I'm just going to leave some peaks of white there. Just like that.
And then what I want to do is take a smaller brush. I'm going to take my size one. I'm going to wet that and dry it off. And I'm just going to kind of drag in. Maybe I'm not. A little bit of this black just to soften that edge a bit. Maybe even bring in some flicks of black. And some just maybe here. You have creative license here really to do whatever you want. What I like about these detail brushes is you get a lot of control as to how much paint you're kind of pushing around. So I am quite happy to have a wide selection of detail brushes from this set. So I really like that. Okay, so I'm just putting in a little bit of black down the center or ha but well not center but part way down just to give it a little bit of texture and interest i say that a lot but i do find it's important even if you have nice bleeds if you don't have some sort of texture in there it can still start to look a little flat So I'm going to rinse and dry off my brush and drag this in a little bit. Not too far. You don't want to completely hide that pink, but it just makes it look like the wings have a little something to them. Now we'll do the bottom, uh, bottom two wings. Start with this one. I'm going to turn my paper again. Just like that. And maybe we'll do a few little dots. Oops. Not happy about that. Just on the outer edge there. Okay, so take that black and don't fill the whole thing in. We're going to put a couple dots. I didn't do such a great job there. And again, I don't want too harsh and harsh of an edge. So I'm going to take my number two. A little damp. Whoop. And just come up to that black and have that bleed in a little bit. So I'm just bringing the water up to the edge just to kind of kickstart a little bit of a bleed there and then just continuing to soften it out and then for the body of course I'm just going to do that straight black we're not going to complicate anything and I'm going to use my size one and you can do it solid black or you can leave some areas of white for some highlights, which I think I will do. Just so it's not a solid black blob of a body. Just leave a little highlight there.
through his head. Leave a little highlight on his head. And then we'll do his antenna, antennae. And I'm just gonna do them like a squiggly line, not squiggly, curved. The little dot on the end, a little kind of whimsical. And that's our first butterfly. So now we'll go to the pink one. Put some Payne's gray up here. And I'm going to, same thing. Maybe, maybe we, I won't do black on this guy. Maybe I'll just do it all gray. And I'm going to bring this one in a little more. I'm going to have it kind of come in and have some kind of curved tips on it. Like so. And we will also put some dots of pink in it by not filling in the whole section with the gray. Like that. And I'm just gonna do a thin line of gray here. Nothing too drastic. And I'm gonna rinse and draw off my brush. I'm gonna come up to that gray. pick some of it up here. I want this to kind of transition softly so I'm just picking up some of the gray to just soften that edge a bit. Like that. Now we'll try to mimic the same thing on the other side. And then the same thing, rinse and dry off my brush. Whoops. Actually not, don't dry it off too much. Just drag it on the edge of your jar a bit and soften these edges again. In there. So I'm just playing around. You can do, of course, whatever you like. It's just nice to play with the bleeds just going to try to soften this edge a bit. I may regret it because I may get a bloom now, but I'm not stressing too much. And then for the bottom of the butterfly, we'll just keep it simple. Just outline the whole wing with this gray. I didn't really have any pre-planned ideas of what I was going to do with these guys. So I'm just kind of winging it. Pardon the, pardon the pun. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is soften the inside and leave a hard edge on the outside. So just going in with some water here just to touch that edge and have that gray bleed just on this inside edge. Just like that. And I think I'll go in with my size one brush and also just kind of drag some of that gray out. Maybe even just go in and put a little dry dry brush strokes in here. I may regret this. 
so my brush is pretty dry and I'm just gonna start flicking in some of that gray just on the bottom wings maybe come into this center part here where the two wings separate rinse and draw off my brush and just kind of soften some of these lines up it's not softening up too much So this is just adding a little bit of shape to these bottom wings. I don't want to do much more than this because I'm going to start overworking it. Okay, so just drag this out a bit with a damp brush. You can even just kind of mush that around a bit, soften it up a bit. And then just for a little bit of a pop, I'm going to do his body black as well, not gray. A bit of highlight on his body. Or her body, I don't know, could be a, could be a female. Do the head. Leave a little highlight on the head and then the antenna, antennae. And a dot, and a dot. I kind of like the gray, I think I do want to have it pop a little bit. So I'm using my size one here, and I just want to outline just the top edge of this wing. Just one fine little line of black. Not the whole wing, just the, just the very top. Just like so. Now we've got our last butterfly to do. And you don't have to use black. You know, I could finish this guy off with um, a dark, really dark green, but I just, I do like the black. So again, we're just gonna go around the entire edge and I'm using my size one brush now. Maybe I'm gonna switch to my size two. A size one is so small that you don't get a long path of paint because there's not a lot of paint on your brush for just a little size two. And I'm not going to worry about um, the dots on this one because I think I'm going to put them in with my um, white gel pen because I want white. I don't want blue dots up here. I want the real white to kind of stand out. And you don't have to use a white gel pen when I do do these dots. Of course, you can use gouache if you've got white gouache or white acrylic or um, PH Martin's bleed proof white whatever you like and I think for this 
bottom wing, maybe we'll put some black dots in. You know what, I'm going to try something. Let's thicken up this line and have it hit those dots. Just so they're kind of like bumps of black in there. Made another one here. I kind of like that. Now another thing I want to try, you know what, let me just get the body in first. And some antennae again. Oh, I should have switched to my smaller brush. Oh well, these ones are a little thicker. And we can even put some legs on this one. Just like that. But one thing I wanted to try, just for fun, is to go into the Viridian again. I did miss a little bit of an area here, so I'm just going to kind of touch that up. But I just wanted to kind of tap in a line of, well not tap in, painting, in, painting in a line of Viridian. close to his body here. So it's quite heavily pigmented. Just want to make sure it stays wet. And I'm going to go in with my size one brush. Just damp. And I just want to kind of flick out that viridian. So my brush is pretty dry. You can see you get that dry brush effect. And I just wanted to add a little bit of texture. Just like that. Just trying to soften this out a bit. So I do like the fact that um, you can rework them. That's nice. It's not lifting too much. You do have to be careful. So I'm just going to make sure this is perfectly dry and then I'm going to put some white dots on that guy and then we're going to call them done. Okay, so now that these are dry, I do like the gray on this one, but I just find it's missing a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to go in with my Micron pen and just go around the outside edge. Maybe put a little more distinction around his body. Now I'm going to take my white um, Uniball Signo. And I'm just going to do those white dots that I wanted to do up on these wings up here. Maybe I'll even just put one white dot in the middle of these black ones that we did down here. So that's it. There's our butterflies. Um, my final results on these on this paint set is uh, the colors are nice and vibrant. Some of them some of them move a little slower than I'm used to, like I say, but uh, that could be good if you're um, beginner to, beginner to intermediate and you want to just kind of you know be able to manipulate the paint a little uh, more on your own rather than have the bleeds get away from you. 
Um, I do find that if you do have the right amount of water on your paper, that they do bleed quite nicely. This one bled very nicely. I'm really happy with that one. Um, and if you go on and glaze, I don't find that it lifts too much. So I, I was happy about that. So all in all, yeah, this is a, a good little beginner to intermediate set or even a set if you're, you know, beyond beginner just to take with you as a little travel kit. So yeah, I think I'll be using it more in the future. As for the paper, I'm quite happy with the paper and I'm really curious to see how the paints I use are going to react on this paper. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and don't forget if you do visit their website, um, they have a ton of stuff on their website other than just watercolor as well. And don't forget to use my discount code. It will be linked in the description box as well as uh, the links to these products. So that's it for today. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care and I'll see you next time.